Hello, my name is Jim Fletcher, and I'm here today to talk to you about three instructional design principles and how to use them. So these are instructional design principles that Mayor came up with. They help kind of weed out that non-essential, the information that's really not necessary for what the students are learning. We call it extraneous um, information, and these principles are designed to kind of weed out that information so that it can focus the students on what is essential and uh, to help reduce cognitive load. So the first principle I want to talk to you about is coherence principle. And what coherence principle is, is it is um, the instructor or the designer taking out all irrelevant information. That means anything that doesn't have a particular uh, reason to be there to help the students learn. It's not necessary for the information that they learn or it's something extra that may or may not help them um, learn or understand what they're learning. So how to use coherence principle is really very simple. According to the theory, um, by removing that unneeded text, pictures, video, animation, whatever, you reduce the extraneous overload that the students have, and by reducing that extraneous information, then what remains is the essential information that the students need. So if you look at the picture here below, you see just the picture of the guy with a um, machine, and if you go to the other side that says not this, then you see that it's got some extra stuff that the students really don't need to understand. You know, you're already going to tell them what the program's about, so they really don't need to see that written down. So the next principle is redundancy principle. And what it is, is it's the ability of the instructor to take out any repeating information, whether it be graphs, text, pictures, whatever. That way you don't overload the dual channels of visual and audio. So how does redundancy work? So by eliminating the text and the narration that mimics each other, you reduce the extraneous overload um, to the students. So as you can see from this um, example, um, the, the text has been taken away from the one so that it's not overloaded. So what, what you reduce is the fact that the students have to look at the, the wording and then look at the picture or look at the graph or whatever. So you kind of take that, that area where they try to focus on two different things, and this way they only have to focus on one thing. So the last principle I want to highlight is signaling principle. And you also hear this called cueing at times. And what it is is you're actually highlighting the essential information that you want the students to remember and be cognizant of. This helps them identify what they really need to remember and focus on. So how does signaling work? So signaling works by um, you either highlighting, underlining, bold face, or drawing attention to a particular part of the information that you want to highlight. Um, it reduces the extraneous overload that students have when they have to go through a um, paragraph and actually pick out what it is that you want them to retrieve. It just helps them um, focus more on what's important and get rid of that that's not important. Important. So as you can see from this um, example that I have at the bottom, the, the highlighted portion is in green so the students know that that is what they want them to do that is what the instructor wants them to remember 
and then the other one you don't have that so they're kind of just sit back looking at it to see what it is so what I now want to do is kind of give you a demonstration of how these three principles can be used in a presentation so what I'm gonna do is do a very simple um, presentation on basic EKG and it's going to be scaled towards the layman terms because I know there's a lot of people out there that when they they go to the doctor and they see them taking a uh, EKG a tracing of the heart or they look at their heart they wonder what some of those beats are so this is going to be a very basic EKG class so what is an EKG well an EKG or an electrocardiogram is um, a tracing of the electroactivity of the heart and it lets us see kind of what's going on in the heart um, in the case of you know electrical disruption it can show up as um, any damage to the heart or anything that's really wrong with the heart can be diagnosed from the EKG um, most EMS providers can do this and all the hospitals can do it so when somebody actually looks at an EKG and there's two different types there's a four lead which is just what we call limb leads and it just gives you a one view of the heart or you can get a 12 lead which gives you 12 different views of the heart um, you can tell a lot of different things you can tell um, whether they're having a heart attack and by knowing basic anatomy and where those leads are placed you can actually tell what part of the heart is having the heart attack you know where the blockage is and, and you know doctors can take people to the cath lab and go right in and, and grab that blockage so the P wave is the first positive flexion that you will find in a heartbeat and it's on the monitor it shows that the atrials have fired or what we call depolarizing and it will go above the isoelectric line which is an imaginary line drawn straight across the um, bottom of the QRS of the PQRS um, right here so it just shows and then you will see that everything else um, kind of plays off that isoelectric line so the next part of the heart is the Q wave which is the first uh, negative deflection so it would be down in what we call the QRS complex complex which is actually the ventricles firing and it is indicated by the Q and the little red arrow right there so the next wave you see is the R wave which is the first upward deflection um, after the P wave and it again represents um, ventricular depolarization so the ventriculars are actually firing so the S wave is the last part of the ventricles firing and in some people it will be there and some other people's it won't but it is a downward deflection and it will go down below all of the other deflections that are there so the QRS is the representation of the ventricles firing or depolarizing as we talk and it encompasses the Q the R and the S complexes just like I showed you now when we look at a heart monitor when a doctor looks at a heart monitor a lot of times they're just looking at the overall QRS complex they're not looking at each individual um, wave until they identify that there's a problem now the final wave of the heartbeat is the T wave and it's a positive deflection and it is at the end of each QRS complex and it is it shows that the that the ventricles are ready to fire again it's it's what we call repolarization but that it will actually or it is actually part of them getting ready to fire again 
So I hope you were able to pick up on how I used the coherence, the redundancy, and the signaling principles in the little presentation that I did. Um, you saw that I highlighted the important things. Um, I didn't talk about what was on the screen. I talked more of what you would see. Um, I hope you got to understand a little bit more about the QRS and it helped me understand more about the principles. So um, thank you for spending the last 15 minutes with me and uh, thank you.